My name is Rachel Hampton. I'm an undergraduate student in Dr. Callaway's class at the University of Georgia, and today I would like to talk to you about Prevotella. So Prevotella is a genus of bacteria, and it's actually relatively new. It was only formed in the 90s. We had a bacteria that we called Bacteroides ruminicola, and we classified it as Bacteroides because it is shaped like a rod, it produces succinate, and it does not digest cellulose. However, in the 90s, we found that Prevotella ruminicola was sensitive to bile salts and lacks the hexose monophosphate pathway that Bacteroides has, so we reclassified it. Um, bacteria in the Prevotella genus are gram-negative, and there are actually several species of Prevotella. So we have Romicola, which has undergone stricter definitions since the early 90s, Bryantii, Albensis, Brevis, and Pectinivora, which is actually, to my knowledge, the newest species of Prevotella. And Prevotella can actually make up a large portion of the ruminal population. Um, it can make up to it can make up up to 70% of bacteria in the rumen. So, Prevotella lives mainly on carbs. It prefers starch to cellulose. However, it does work synergistically with cellulolytic bacteria to break down fiber. Um, some strains of Prevotella can use uh, hemicellulose and pectin. And in addition to getting its energy sources, it gets its nitrogen from peptides and ammonia. So it's pretty diverse in everything that it does. Um, the main end products produced from Prevotella are acetate, succinate, suc excuse me, succinate, and propionate. So some bacteria in the Prevotella genus um, need vitamin B12 to produce propionate from succinate, such as Prevotella ruminicola strain 23. Um, others don't produce it at all. Others just don't need the vitamin B12. So it's a pretty diverse genus. Um, the bacteria themselves are very diverse in what they do. They are amylolytic. Uh, they can utilize fiber and they are, are, are proteolytic as well. So, as I mentioned before, there are several species of Prevotella. In 1997, Augustin et al. proposed that we split these, uh, split Prevotella runicola in two different groups. And they did that based on their guanine and cytosine content. Um, so, to my understanding, you can use this guanine and cytosine content to understand the environmental niche of a bacteria. So if different species of Prevotella have different guanine and cytosine content, that means that maybe they occupy slightly different niches than their other species. Um, another factor that differentiates the species is what they can ferment. Um, so some, for example, some Prevotella can utilize xylose, some can't. There is an enzyme called CMCase that is important for cellulose. Some Prevotella can utilize that, others can't, so that's another factor. And then just a fun fact that I learned while doing this project is Prevotella bryantii is actually named for Marvin Bryant. Um, so Dr. Callaway is always talking about Hungate and Bryant, so I just thought that was a really cool fact. So why is Prevotella important? Um, there are actually several reasons. Uh, the first is that it can be found in a lot of different places, not just the rumen. It can be found in the human mouth, skin abscesses, soils, and the hindguts of herbivores and omnivores. So if for no other reason you are interested in Prevotella, you should be interested in it because it's in you. Um, Prevotella can account for up to 70% of ruminal bacteria which I think is a large number. I think that makes it important for us to understand what exactly is happening here. Um, and while Prevotella, the genus, makes up 70% of that ruminal bacteria, a paper by, I hope I'm saying the name right, Beckley et al. said that while that's while that's the genus, we only know 2-4% to 4 of the species 
in the rumen, of Prevotella in the rumen. So there's still a lot for us to learn about Prevotella, and I think it's important to do so since it's making up such a large portion of the ruminal population. So as I mentioned before, there is a new species of Prevotella called Prevotella pectinivora. They found it in the GI tract of pigs, and it was discovered in 2015. So Prevotella pectinivora was isolated using a combination of traditional as well as modern technologies. So they put it on a plate and isolated it until they got a pure culture. And then they ran genetic testings to make sure that what they had is what they thought they had. Um, so some general characteristics of this new species are on the slide. Feel free to pause and look at those. Um, what I found interesting about this new species of Prevotella is that while vitamin K can often help other Prevotella species grow, it didn't help this species at all. But when they added pectin to the plate, it did. It made it grow better and faster, um, which is probably why Pectinivora is the species name. Um, this species can break down a variety of sugars, and its main fermentation products are acetate and succinate. It will also produce isovalerate, propionate, and isobutyrate, but those are more minor compared to these main two. Probably my favorite study on Prevotella that I found is this core bacterial microbiome paper. So this paper took over 700 animals, ruminant animals, from all over the world, regardless of species, regardless of location in the world, regardless of diet, they found that there's about seven groups of bacteria that are present in every single microbiome, and Prevotella is one of those. So, along with these other six uh, bacterial groups, Prevotella makes up about 67.1% 7, of all rumen bacterial populations on the earth, or at least of these 700 animals. I thought that was really cool. Um, obviously, different diets and stuff had effect on the exact population numbers. Like, for example, Prevotella was found to be higher when the animals were fed concentrate as opposed to forage. But I think it's really cool that no matter where these animals are, what they're eating, you are going to find some Prevotella no matter what. The last study that I found was actually uh, published this year and it found that there's a negative correlation between Prevotella population and high production in dairy cattle, which I kind of thought was odd. Um, and to be quite honest, I'd like to look, in it, look into it a bit more. Um, so they found that, you know, all cattle, all their dairy cattle had significant populations of Prevotella, but the high producing dairy cattle population had 37.85% Prevotella as part of their microbiome, while the low producing had 47.29. I think that's amazing that only a 10% difference and a bacterial concentration can be the difference between high production and low production, um, personally. And I just really enjoyed reading the paper. Um, another thing that I thought was kind of quirky at the end of the paper was they stated that there's kind of a general accepted fact that the more Prevotella you have, the fatter you, the fatter the animal is. Um, and they did note that there cattle with higher Prevotella populations were fatter, um, but I'm kind of a little bit questioning this because their higher Prevotella cattle were also their lower producing, so I'm wondering if that's necessarily direct correlation or kind of like a indirect thing. So these are my references. Um, feel free to go read them yourselves. I personally think they're pretty interesting. All of the information that I got for this presentation was from these. I'm sorry I didn't directly cite during my presentation, um, but yeah, thank you.